Hi, I'm Jack Koenig with Graco Industrial Lubrication Equipment, and today I'm here with something resembling a lubrication system for a frack pump, where we've got a G3 and an MSP valve, and in between them we have a grease strainer, which is a type of filter. We're going to talk about some troubleshooting today, and first I want to demonstrate a system that would be a simple system with no cycle monitoring, so either a G3 Pro or a G3 Max being used without the cycle switch. Now the pump's running and we're going to be able to see grease coming out of our divider valve at first. Here comes the grease. Now I'm going to close this ball valve to simulate a blockage on that output line. Let's see what happens when we get a blockage. All right, we're starting to see some pressure spiking up on our pressure gauge. Here we go, now we're getting our big spike. This little pin just extended here, and now there's some grease coming out of this fitting. This fitting is the relief valve. The relief valve is typically chosen to have a pressure that's gonna be lower than the pressure rating of your tubing, so that your tubing doesn't become the relief valve. This way, the relief valve dumps off extra pressure to prevent any lines from breaking. Since this is using steel tubing, I used a relief valve that's got a fairly high pressure rating, which is about 2,000 or 2,500 PSI. So that's what you're seeing on the pressure gauge now, and the pressure is not gonna go beyond that because it's just dumping out. So if you're ever in the field and you see a relief valve dumping grease or your pressure gauge running really high, that's an indication that you could have a blockage somewhere. If you're using indicators on the divider valve like this one, you can go and find this pin popped out. It won't let you push it back in while the pressure is still there. And that tells you that there's a blockage in that line. With a blockage, when you clear the blockage, and I'm gonna simulate that now by opening my ball valve again, you'll see the grease just dumped out the end there. Now this pin will let me reset it. Now that there isn't any pressure on the outlet, I can push the pin back in. So that just confirms that the source of the problem was found and that there is no longer pressure being held in that line. If none of the pins are extended, there's a couple of other possibilities. It could be that the mounting screws on the divider valves are over torqued. In that case, the pressure is gonna come into the valve but never actually get out to the outlet lines these indicators are connected to the outlets so they look at outlet pressure. In this case, our ball valve is causing pressure on this outlet and the pin is indicating that. But if no pins are extended, it could mean, especially on a new installation, that these mounting screws are over torqued. So they would just need to be loosened and retightened a little more gently. It's less than 10 foot pounds, which is, when you think about it, a very tiny amount. It, and it's really just because you have straight threads here and o-rings to seal the valves against their bases so they don't need a lot of pressure just to tighten up those o-rings a little bit the other possibility is that the filter is dirty if your system includes a grease strainer or some other kind of filter it could just be that it's time to change it and that's why you're seeing so much pressure there's a separate video that i made about changing the element in a grease strainer so check that out if you think your filter is dirty and it's time for a new element so that's kind of what you're gonna be looking for on a system without cycle indication. So now let's take a look at a little more complicated system where there is cycle indication. And in this case, we're also gonna talk about an external warning light that can show you remotely that there is a problem with your pump. Now I have reattached the cycle switch to the G3 Max pump and reprogrammed it so that it's gonna be looking for cycles again. But before we turn the power back on, let's talk about external lights for the alarm relay. We call this the DIN alarm relay, and right now you can't see it because it's hidden behind the relief valve. But it's this square connector. Another name for it is DIN form A, because DIN can actually refer to a lot of things. But when we say DIN connector, we generally mean DIN form A. Some people call that a Hirschman connector. And that's what we use for the power connector on some pumps. So on one side, there's the power connector, and on the other side, there's the DIN alarm relay. If you have this DIN alarm relay, because not all G3 pumps do, if you do have it, the cable that we sell to connect to it is 124 
640. But again, you can just get a DIN Form A from some electrical supplier and make your own cable. From here, you need two more things to make the alarm light work. This is a dry relay, which means it does not have any power. All it does is act as a switch in your circuit. You also need a power source, and these relays are compatible with both AC and DC power, and then you need a light. Graco does not supply the lights, so I'm gonna show you a few options here of just some lights I borrowed from one of our electrical engineers. These are all just little DC powered lights. I don't have any AC ones because I didn't want to work with AC voltage on this circuit, but any of these lights can just be hooked up to a power source and then have the positive voltage or the hot line routed through the relay to act as the switch. So now I'm gonna hook this all up with a DC power supply because again, these are DC lights in this case, but you can use AC. And then the 124640 cable, which is compatible with both AC and DC voltage as well. So let's get everything hooked up and turn the power back on and then we will simulate a blockage and see what the light does in that case. Here is our power supply. Here is our light, so keep an eye on that. And then here's the cable running back to the DIN connector on the alarm relay and the rest of the system we already discussed. So let's run our pump and see what happens. I turned the on time down to just 30 seconds so that this would happen more quickly, but let's see what happens when it tries to run the system. The display is showing ERCY, which means it's a cycle fault, CY for cycle. And you can see not only, in a, not only is the display flashing its lights, but now the external light is also flashing to show you from maybe a further distance that there's a problem. So this was one of the lights that we had around here, but it could be a much larger light. It could be in many different forms. It's just something that you can probably see from further away. The point is this pump is in fault right now. Look at the pressure gauge. Think back to what we just showed on our system without cycle monitoring and what should we be looking for on our pressure gauge. We would expect to see some high pressure if there was a blockage. So it's probably not a dirty filter and you can't probably see that from where the camera's at but none of these pins are extended. So it doesn't look like it's actually a blockage and it's not. The way I simulated it this time was by disconnecting the cable from the proximity switch or the cycle switch so that's a possibility out in the field that maybe your cable came undone or it snapped or got cut or maybe the proc switch has actually failed and is no longer working. So if everything seems like it's working, there's grease coming out and you're not seeing pressure, it could just be simply that the cable has either been broken or disconnected or the proc switch has failed or been removed. Another sign is that the relief valve didn't dump any grease out. So the pressure gauge wasn't showing any pressure and the relief valve was not dumping out grease. So now I am gonna close the ball valve again and show a blocked line and let's see what happens now. First, let's clear the cycle fault from before. Now the light stopped flashing and the, the uh, error went away from the screen. And now let's do a manual run and I still only have this running for 30 seconds. It should take more like a couple of minutes, so the normal time that this system was set to run was three minutes and 30 seconds. I just obviously want to have that happen faster for the video, so I cut it short. But here now we've, we're seeing our pin pop out. We've got grease dumping out of the relief valve, and we've got pressure showing on our gauge. So now this tells us that there is a blockage. So similar to what we discussed in the previous example when there was no cycle monitoring, we've got to relieve the pressure before it's gonna let us reset the pin. So now pretend the blo blockage is cleared, we can reset our pin, the pressure gauge has dropped, and now the system will run normally after we clear the fault. So that's a real simple example of a cycle fault. Next, let's go look at what happens when there's a low level in the reservoir. 
to simulate a low level in our system, I needed a different pump. So as you can see, our sample system is back here now, and this is a different pump, but it's gonna operate the same as that other one. It happens to have a follower plate in it, but that's not gonna matter for what we're doing here. So let's run our pump, and this reservoir is empty. You're gonna see we still even have the plug in the pump outlet because there's no grease to pump, so nothing's gonna be coming out of that. And let's just see what happens now as it sees that there's no grease in the reservoir. Here is that warning or pre-alarm that is telling us that it sees there is no grease, but it's still pumping because I should say it doesn't see that there isn't any grease, it just sees that the grease is low. So the light comes on constantly on the external light, but then this little white alarm bell and the low level signal, low level symbol have their lights flashing on the face of the controller. And it also is saying ERLL. Yep, here it is again, ERLL for low level. So that just flashes on the screen every so often. But as far as the external light, the big key is that the light is on solid. It's not flashing at this point because this is just the pre-alarm or the warning. The system's gonna keep running. If you refill it with grease in this stage, it's gonna clear the error itself and just recognize that it has grease again and keep running as normal and that light will go off on its own even if you forget to reset the display. So the cancel button would clear that out but it would just come back right away. So now the big thing is that as it continues to run, eventually it will go to fault. So the controller knows that after enough revolutions that it is gonna be completely empty and at that point it's gonna stop and go to fault. So now let's just let it run for a while and let that happen. And there we have it. Now it is in an actual fault and we still have the flashing light next to the low level symbol, but now instead of that white bell, we have the black one with the exclamation mark inside it to say that this is an alarm, this is a full on fault. The pump stopped running, the light the external light is flashing, and also the time on the controller is counting up. Anytime this controller counts up on a time basis, that means it's in fault. Whenever it's in normal operation, the timer is counting down. So just the fact that it's counting up says that you have a problem. But again, the, extra, the external light is flashing to let you know from a distance that something is wrong with the system. So again, you need some sort of an external power source if you're gonna use the external light because the, the DIN alarm relay is just a dry relay with no power. So it's just gonna act as a switch in your circuit. Normally, you're gonna use your battery or your ignition on a mobile application to power this, but because I'm in the office here, I just used a DC power converter to hook up my light. One quick note about the warning versus the fault is that a warning will clear itself. So when you put grease back into this reservoir, it will clear the warning on its own. But with a fault, you have to hold down this reset button for a few seconds to clear the fault after it's gone into fault. So again, when that pump is counting up, whether we're talking about clearing a blockage from a cycle fault or refilling the reservoir for a low level fault, once you fix the problem, you have to come back here and hold down this reset button for a few seconds to clear that fault, and then your system will resume normal operation. This was just a real basic overview of troubleshooting for a simple MSP divider valve system. If you run into any confusing situations or any other problems and you need more help, reach out to your local Graco distributor or to your Graco account manager or to our tech assistance group. Or if any of those people can't answer it, then they'll come to me and I'll help you figure it out too. So we're all here to help you. Thank you for watching this video and thank you for choosing Graco.